welcome back to my channel. Well, it's a few days after Thanksgiving and you've had all the turkey sandwiches that you can stomach and you're sitting there wondering what the heck am I gonna do with the rest of this huge turkey that I still have in my refrigerator? And the answer is turkey pot pie and turkey croquette. And I'm going to be making both of those for you today. The first recipe for the turkey pot pie comes from the Better Homes and Gardens new cookbook published in 1981. The recipe is actually entitled chicken pot pies, but you can of course substitute turkey for the chicken, which is what I'm going to do today. And the next recipe that I'm going to be making is a simple version of turkey croquettes. Let's get started with the turkey pot pie. I have everything ready here. All right, the recipe calls for one 10 ounce package of frozen peas and carrots. Now, I actually had quite a few uh, green beans left over, so I'm doing half and half. I'm doing half carrots and half green beans. Of course, you can probably substitute any vegetable that you wish. Half a cup of chopped onion, half a cup of chopped fresh mushrooms, one quarter cup of butter, one third of a cup of flour, half a teaspoon of salt, one quarter teaspoon ground sage, an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. Now, the recipe calls for two cups water, three quarters of a cup of milk, and instant chicken bouillon granules. Well, I'm doing a little bit of substituting here because I had uh, some chicken stock in the refrigerator. So I'm using two cups of chicken stock and the three quarters of a cup of milk. Three cups of diced turkey and I use both dark and white meat for that. The recipe is calling for some chopped pimento, not a pimento fan, I'm going to pass on that, and a quarter cup of snipped parsley. Didn't have any fresh parsley on hand, so I'm going with the dry version instead. And a pastry for a double crust pie. I'm taking the easy route and I'm going to be using prepackaged pie crusts today. The first step was to cook the peas and carrots according to the package directions. As I said, I'm using green beans instead of peas and carrots, and I'm also using carrots. I've already cooked the carrots, they were frozen. Green beans, they were already cooked. So that step is done. Next, I'm going to be cooking my onion and my mushroom in melted butter. You want to cook your mushrooms and your onion until they're tender, but you don't want them to turn brown. I'm using white onion and baby portobello mushrooms, but of course you can use any kind of onion that you choose. And there are many varieties of mushrooms out there. Pot pies are a great way to use up leftovers. The onion is starting to become translucent, which is a good sign. Next, I'm going to be adding my flour and my seasonings, and that's going to make a roux, which will be the base for the sauce. It's thickening up nicely. Now I'm going to be adding my liquids. It says all at once, but my experience tells me I should add it a little at a time. Otherwise, the flour tends to get a little lumpy. Once you get your flour paste mixed into the first part of your liquid, then you can add the rest. important to keep stirring as you add the liquid. And in goes the milk. Then you want to continue to cook and stir until it thickens up and starts to bubble. 
keep stirring so that the mixture does not start to stick to the bottom of your pan. It's definitely starting to thicken up. Got a really nice creamy texture to it. All right, it is starting to bubble. So next up is to add the rest of the ingredients, which is the turkey, the vegetables, and the parsley. Go ahead and add the turkey. Don't dump it all in too quickly, you might end up splattering. My green beans actually had uh, sliced almonds included. So those are going in as well. And the parsley. Again, we're going to cook all of this until it becomes nice and bubbly. That has thickened and is bubbling nicely. And we're going to go ahead and take this off the heat. Now the recipe tells you to put it in a 12 by two casserole dish, but I'm going to put it into this pie plate instead. So you just pour it right in, no bottom crust, and that fits perfectly. Even this out a little bit here. Now because I'm putting it in a regular size pie plate, I only need one pie crust. If I were putting it in a larger shaped dish, I would have needed the two. Lay it on top. Make sure you cut a few slits into the top to allow air to vent as it bakes. And now because this is so full and I don't want it bubbling over into my oven, I'm putting it on top of a baking sheet. All that's needed at this point is to bake it in a 450 oven for 10 to 12 minutes or until the top is golden brown because all of the ingredients are already cooked. And now while the turkey pot pie bakes in the oven, I'm going to get started on my croquettes. My turkey croquette recipe comes from the General Food Kitchen's cookbook and it was published in 19. 59. Uh, croquettes is one of those recipes that we really don't see very much these days, but it's a great way to use up your some of your leftover turkey. The recipe calls for three tablespoons of butter, a third of a cup of flour, one cup of turkey or chicken stock, two and a quarter tablespoons of salt, one and a quarter tablespoons black pepper, a half a teaspoon of thyme, Two cups of finely diced turkey. Make sure that you dice it finely because you're going to be shaping the mixture into balls. So you don't want big chunks of turkey. And again, I've used both dark and white meat here. One teaspoon of chopped parsley, two eggs, two tablespoons of milk, one and a quarter cup of fine breadcrumbs. First off, we're going to be making our roux. So let's put the butter in the saucepan and melt it. I'm doing all of this over medium heat. Once the butter is melted, we'll go ahead and add our flour. Stir it all in. It's made a nice paste. And then gradually add our stock. Again, if you add it all too quickly, you may end up with a very lumpy roux. When I'm making a roux, sometimes I use a whisk. Other times, like now, I'm using a wooden spoon. It doesn't really matter, whichever feels most comfortable for you. So now that's got a very nice, smooth consistency. I'm going to add two teaspoons of the salt, one teaspoon of pepper, and all of, whoops, and all of the thyme. And I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. I don't want it to burn. 
And then we're going it's to a really go nice day here today. That. It's cool, but it's sunny. So Until while my croquettes are nicely. standing and the Add crumbs the are adhering to them, the parsley. I'm going to go outside and take a walk. I'll be back here in just a little bit. Stir until combined. So this is making a pretty thick paste here. And now I'll remove it from the heat. The next step is to beat one of the eggs. And add it to the turkey mixture. Turn the heat back on to medium. Cook and stir for about one minute. The egg is acting as the binder for the croquettes. Without it, they would not hold their shape. It's a consistency similar to that of oatmeal. That's been about a minute. Now we're going to allow the mixture to cool. And once it's cool, we'll be able to shape it into our croquettes. The croquette mixture has cooled and now we're going to shape it. Traditionally, croquettes are shaped into upside down ice cream cones, but I am going to go with balls. supposed to make 12 croquettes. I actually have a little bit extra, so I'm going to just add to a couple of the slightly smaller ones that I've already made. The next step is to beat the remaining egg into the milk. Now you can beat it on its own and then add the milk, or if you're being careful, you can Add it to the milk and then beat it. And I'll add my remaining pepper and salt to my milk and egg mixture. Now one at a time, take your croquettes, roll them in your breadcrumbs, then roll them in the egg mixture and back again into the crumbs. Now, if you start to run out of your egg mixture and you're concerned you might not have enough, stretch it out a little bit by adding a little more milk. It's a trick I learned from my mom. Made it with a little extra milk. Okay, I've got my croquettes. They've all been dipped in breadcrumbs and my egg mi milk mixture and they need to sit for about an hour to give it time for the crumbs to adhere. It's a really nice day here today. It's cool, but it's sunny. So while my croquettes are standing and the crumbs are adhering to them, I'm going to go outside and take a walk. I'll be back here in just a little bit. Croquettes have had a chance for the crumbs to adhere to the outside. And now I'm melting my fat in which I'm going to fry up the croquettes. I am going with shortening, vegetable shortening. You can use whatever you like, really. Maybe you prefer lard. I don't know that I would recommend olive oil because that will impart that olive oil flavor into the croquettes. And unless you really like the idea of having a slightly olive oil flavor croquette, then go for it. But I am going with vegetable shortening because it's mild and it won't impart um, any additional taste to the croquettes. It should be 375 degrees and that's where a candy thermometer will come in handy. You'll be able to gauge the temperature correctly. I am using a large pot to heat my oil in and to fry my croquettes because I'm that way I won't have to worry so much about splattering and you can see the shortening is just about melted and I'm going to use a slotted spoon 
Oh, it's sizzling nicely. I'm gonna turn on my vent. I'm gonna wanna cook these at about, for about a minute and a half on each side until they're a golden brown. You don't wanna overcrowd the pot. So I'm gonna do half at a time. they've finished cooking, go ahead and remove them to a paper covered, to a paper towel covered plate so they can drain. The second batch came out a little nicer than that first batch. I think I let the first batch cook a bit too long on that first side, but this second batch is perfect. And the pot pie and the croquettes are both done. The pot pie came out with a nice crust on top and the croquettes are nice and brown. I already put one on a plate. The Recipe suggests serving it with a tart red jelly. I presume that means cranberry sauce. Try a little bit of the pie here. You can see all the spices in there and the carrots and the beans and we've got some turkey going on. Okay, I'm taking a bite of a croquette with a little bit of cranberry sauce with it. It's really tasty. The outside of the croquette is nice and crisp, but it doesn't feel too oily or heavy. And the inside is nice and, dare I say it, moist. One <laughs> of those words that kind of bothers me. But in this case, it, it's correct. And now we'll try a bite of the Hi. And that's good too. Nice and creamy. And the crust browned just right. It's a really easy way to dispose of some of your Thanksgiving leftovers. Leftover turkey, leftover vegetables, and of course with the croquettes, it's the leftover turkey. Let me know if you give it a try. This is of course good for Thanksgiving leftovers, Christmas leftovers if you have turkey at Christmas, and whenever it is that you might make some sort of poultry, even leftover chicken would be great with these items. Again, I'm Pam. Thank you for joining me at Pam Speakeasy. If you like the video, click that like button. If you like this channel, please feel free to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.